This is a paid program. JJ Publicidad, EMR, and its owners and associates take no responsibility for the opinions or statements made by the talk show host or their guest. Bastat kasama mo, kababayan mo, maligaya ka na, ito sa Amerika, sa buhay buhay sa Amerika. Uy mga kababayan, kapuso at kapamilya, oras na para magsama-sama tayo para sa isang oras na kwentuhan na magbibigay ng aral at inspirasyon. Dito lang sa ating programang Buhay Buhay sa Amerika ni Ria Luz. Hola, magandang magandang hapon mga kababayan. Good evening everybody, this is Ria Luz and we are live at Entre Mujeres Radio for our Women's Month episode and this episode we will be showing you about women's health and wellness. It's a very important topic for women, especially uh, it took me a lot of courage to bring this episode. As you know, I just recently had my hysterectomy after eight years of being a breast cancer survivor and this is not an easy topic for me to bring. That's why I have requested this amazing guest with me who also have experienced the same. I would go first from the one who are very close to me. This very uh, outstanding and outstanding parents of 2023 and truly not only their fashion icon, but Everyone in our community have so much uh, respect for these amazing leaders. I have with me Tita Debbie Billiamore, who's Hello. really at her 82. Oh, wow, 82, and she's still looking so beautiful. Say hello, oh. Tita Debbie. Hello, everybody. I'm Debbie, and I'm very glad to be on this show today. Thank you very much, Ria. Thank you, Tita Debbie. And next to me is another amazing, as I said, outstanding parent of 2023, Tita Amy Ballester. Okay, I'm Amy, well, Amelita Dizon Ballester. I originally came from uh, 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 Angeles, Pampanga, and migrated to the United States uh, in 1967. Wow. That is quite a long time, Tita. A long time. Yes, and we also have another guest who is my inspiration in bringing this topic. Engineer Bernadette Bersilia Pineda, all the way from Tennessee. Hi, Bernie. Everyone, I'm glad to be part of Buhay Buhay sa America today. I'm so excited to share our experience and learn from Tita Amy and Tita uh, Debbie. 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 And also from your experience. Basically, oh, that's uh, right. as I said, Bernie, because of your strength and the courage, I gained the courage to share my uh, experience as well. And as we are celebrating the International Women's Month, this is a celebration of our womanhood. And it's such an amazing time that we live in this age and we are born as women. We have so much thing to be grateful for, but also being a woman has so much responsibility. Right, Tita Debbie, Tita Amy, and- Yes, uh, yes. Uh, correct, yes. That's right. Yes. Bernie, so- Yes, for our friends who are tuning in, we just want to remind you, share, like, and comment, and tune in, stand by, Share all your questions and we will try to give the best answer we could give. But just to tell you, we're telling about uh, women's health. We are not doctors. We are not physicians. These are just based on our experience. It's not a professional advice. This is just based on our his history with our medical issues. Thank you so much, Bernie, for reminding our audience on that. And that's why you should 
like and subscribe to Buhay Buhay sa America because uh, these amazing women had been a great part of Buhay Buhay sa America. We're turning almost seven years now. And your support uh, by liking Buhay Buhay sa America and Entre Mujeres Radio, we can continue to uh, bring great, even great guests. Uh, from our last time, we have Tita uh, Nicholas. Lewis, oh, Sita yes, yes. Loida Nicholas Lewis, Correct. who is the most uh, influential woman mm -hmm. in America yeah. Correct. from Filipino, Filipino community. So, and now I have Tita Debbie and Tita Amy and Miss Doc and our engineer Bernie, Bersilia Pineda. So we'll continue to bring you great resource people in the community. So Tita, let's talk about womanhood. What is so special do you think that we can tell people about us as women? Tita Amy? Oh, what, what do you want me to, to say? Uh, uh, what you, how would you define womanhood? What's your, what's, what are well, you grateful being a woman? It's a God-given gift. Uh, and uh, of course, as a woman, you, you really have to bear children. You have to take care of your children. You get into being from puberty, you, you become a woman. And of course, you have to you have to come up with resources, and also you also have to understand what womanhood is being, which we try to inculcate in our children and our grandchildren. That it's a difficult task, but we can live on to it, and we can be we can be happy uh, in spite of all the sickness and in spite of all the things that we need to do as a mother. Yes. So uh, I think uh, as women, we should be also an inspiration for both our children and our grandchildren so that as role models, we can, they can live up to be like us. Uh, being a woman is already, uh, always a gift. Yes. And uh, that's what I, I think about it. Thank, Thank you, you Tita. Very much. Parang Miss Universe yung tanong ko kay Tita. Parang panalo na. <laughs> Thank you. Tita Amy. Okay, you know what? Um, I have a very short definition of women. Uh -huh. Women is a female mm -hmm. uh, with a reproductive, sy uh, with a reproductive system. system, which means to say we have ovaries, we have fallopian tubes, we have uterus, yes. and we have a breast Cervix and too. unlike Scientific. and cervix, you know. <laughs> and, and we have a breast unlike men, you know, who, is, who are capable of uh, being able to feed our babies. Yes, and we, that's very true, Tita. That's and the scientific part yeah. of it. Uh, yeah, that's correct. I think that's my very definition of a woman. <laughs> Thank you, Tita. And how about Bernie? Um, for me, it's, it's like uh, Tita Debbie said that women is very special. Um, first, God made us as a uh, after his own image in a suitable partner for a man. So uh, it's really encouraging the role, how important, vital role of a women in the motherhood for the the progress of Humanity. the generations. You know, yes. I think he be tayo the dame in numbers kung walang reproductive system which is of course we need the men and the women together to combine at us plan the lord just for us to grow in numbers number one and the motherhood it's not the uh, meaning you are only uh, entitled because you're childbearing but even Bata, you could be also serve as a mother with the knowledge of nurturing, teaching, encouraging, taking care. That's why ang Filipino sabi nga, mother is the light of the house, right? Um, liwanag ng tahanan. Because we, a uh, major role ng woman is to really develop this person, your child, of who of God wants this person to be. So I think it's very uh, important role it's to have a mother who can guide kagaya sabi ni tita debbie as from even your own grandkids you can pass on your your legacy to them yes it's so true and definitely it's such a beautiful definition and 
being having the womb and the breast and all the reproductive system of a woman is really makes us so special as you all mentioned not only in the society but for the procreation and continuity of humanity that's why Amen. god has that's given right. this so much responsibility to women and talking about uh, women i have to mention also our sponsor for today is the women's federation for world peace and that is truly uh, i'm so proud to be a member of the women's federation for world peace and i appreciate the women's federation for world peace for giving me this confidence to being a woman and being such a great uh, it is such an honor to be born as a woman and as we're talking about womenhood we talk about breasts and all those reproductive system and that is our topic today because as i said these women in front of you are not just amazing amazing they are wonderful testimony of resilience and um the difficulty of being a woman after giving birth then suddenly you now have to get sick <laughs> and have to endure this uh, medical situation look like what happened to bernie are you still there yeah i'm here oh good because <laughs> uh, suddenly you were lost in the picture but i really appreciate that uh, as i said it took me courage from all of you to bring this story so bernie um would you be able to share with us about your breast cancer uh, and as well as your recent hysterectomy sure um thank you so much for the opportunity that i could share my experience yes cancer is a big name if you able to hear that from your doctor that sorry you have a cancer it, you, you know, the first thing that will come to your mind is, I think, for me, is fear. Oh, no, I'm going to die. It's the uh, palaging naka attach the label na ito, cancer. Mm -hmm. But that was two years ago. I was 48 years old and just basically um, felt the lump on my, my breast. And then I go straight to my primary care and ask him, hey, can you please... Um, send me to a referral for a mammogram. And then after mammogram, the person said, oh, uh, we need to send you to biopsy because there's something in there. And then after biopsy, they said, we need to operate you right there and there. And it was a crazy time. I think uh, for me, you don't have a chance to really plan your life, mm -hmm. okay, what we're going to do because it's so quick. And... Uh, the doctor said uh, we have to schedule um, lumpectomy to remove your your cyst. And lumpectomy is so quick; it's easy. However, after lumpectomy, there are more. They found out that okay, this is already scattered; it's bigger in size. We need a mastectomy. So, and then of course your emotions getting. A roller coaster of emotions, combination of what are you going to, how you're going to face this. But um, after we scheduled mastectomy, and my doctor said, "Okay, do you want only one side because it's only uh, only on my right side?" And I said, um, "What's the percentage that you will go somewhere else?" And then he said, "It will be <laughs> high risk because I." also been tested with BRCA positive. So it will mutate in a long run. It will just come out in a different place. And that's the reason why I decided to get the both mastectomy, bilateral mastectomy. And then after a few months, uh, BRCA positive, which is, it's, a, it's on my genes, so it is a high risk for cancer. The good thing for me is it is a stage one, so I don't need a chemotherapy, but the doctor issue a pills, which is for estrogen suppressant. Um, and he told me I need to take that for five years. And then after five years, maybe another five years, but the side effects for 
this is so deteriorating to my body. Being an active person, I always want to hike, I always want to do physical work, but that stopped my my energy. I work, I can't even stand up, and I'm very weak, all those hot flushes, and the sign of menopause was very intense. So I decided to stop my medication. Of course, the doctor was not happy uh, because he said, you know, Bernie, this is not a right decision that you are stopping medication. But I told I told them that, you know, I'm going to trust the process, <laughs> that I'm going to enjoy the energy I have and I'm going to do a natural way. So we'll discuss later what are my other things what I'm doing. But because I'm BRCA positive, the doctor recommended hysterectomy after a few months. I also have as well a reconstruction. So it's like four series of operations. Uh, and, and then the last one was hysterectomy because, you know, having breast cancer and the mutation, it will go down to, to my ovaries and uterus. So the doctor advised to complete uterus, and that was last year. Wow. I know I, I have a lot of stories, but I want to give a, I some know. of you time Th to share. But thanks for asking. Thank, thank you for your courage, Bernie. That's why when I have to undergo the hysterectomy, Bernie was the first person I have asked. Because Bernie is very open about her situation, medical issue. And really, you always bring great strength to all of us women you empower us by all the challenges that you have overcome bernie oh thank you but uh getting ahead i didn't know that uh Pita amy had that experience as well mm -hmm. but uh ria Luz is one of those i know that oh she had removed her breast so i have to call her and check on her uh, yeah it is really a matter of women who's helping each other and supporting each other to strengthen us yes i think uh, the one thing that makes me stronger on those times is i realize that i'm not alone there are other women who undergo and uh, uh pop in this kind of challenges so that made me move forward and be positive face my own challenge and that is also women who experience the same as what well. Thank you, Bernie. This is what why we're bringing this story to life yes. and to uh, Buhay Buhay Sa America because not everybody can actually discuss this topic, especially if you have not experienced it yourself. And it took me a while before I can even, I posted that I had gone surgery, but it took me a while before I can tell people directly what kind of surgery did I have. And Took me a it took me courage, and I'm glad that I met Tita Debbie and Tita uh, Amy on a lunch date, and I found out they they also have experienced this. So I said, please come join me on the show. And today, despite their very busy schedule, they came on the show. And Tita Amy initially declined because she has to go for some uh, uh, activity, and she changed her schedule just to be here. Because she said, I want to bring awareness to women. So, Tita Debbie, the mic is yours. To, I mean, Tita Amy, let's okay. have you first share okay. your story. And uh, in, you are an, another inspiration to us. You know, I just would like to f tell everybody that it's very important to me that I come. Mm -hmm. I would like to tell my story and the yes. story of my family. Mm -hmm. Okay, I was diagnosed with... Um, uh, breast cancer in 2000. You know what they say about good news, bad news? Mm -hmm. On that day, when I was diagnosed with breast cancer, I received also a good news. Okay, so we were, we went out to dinner, you know, with my family. And I said, I have something to tell you. I said, so I said, well, I have something to tell you also, my, my son said. Okay, what are you going to tell me? And then he said, my wife is pregnant. <laughs> so that's good news, right? My first grandchild. Okay, now I'm going to give you the bad news. I have breast cancer. <laughs> so so it was, it was really something. Um, being diagnosed with breast cancer is not really very easy. 
when my doctor told me that I have breast cancer, I did not sleep that night, you know. Of course, I was thinking, oh my goodness, I said, I'm going to die. Um, so, but anyway, uh, they did a needle biopsy and, uh, and then the doctor said that it's positive for cancer. Let us, uh, let us, but it's stage zero. They were able to stage it right there. Mm -hmm. It was a stage zero. And then the doctor recommend lumpectomy on my, uh, on my, I forgot already which breast, <laughs> my right breast, okay? We're all uh, right. So, so he said, well, it was 24 years ago. <laughs> so he said, uh, no, you just have to have lumpectomy because you are stage zero. You know, not, you're going to be okay. I have to fight my surgeon. Really, I said, no, I don't want lumpectomy. I want mastectomy. Because the other, he told me that if I'm going to have lumpectomy, I have to be on uh, on tamoxifen for five years and also i have to have uh radiation a series of radiation i forgot already how many times but radiation and the tamoxifen i said no you know what doctor i don't want to go through that just go ahead and uh, do a mastectomy and not only that i want my other breast to be taken out too <laughs> you know he really didn't want to do that uh so he and at that at that time uh, I uh, decided also that I'm going to have reconstruction. So he prepared my breast when he operated on me for reconstruction. And then, lo and behold, the one who is going to do my reconstruction is going somewhere. So it was supposed to have been done all at the same time. But my, my, the one who is going to do the reconstruction had to go someplace. So he said, okay, you just wait. So I waited. Uh, for my uh, plastic surgeon to come. And then when I went to him, he said, you know what, it's too hot. Let's wait until September. So can you imagine three months I was waiting, you know, for the reconstruction? And I asked my husband, do, really I, do I really need to have reconstruction? Is, this, is it that important to you? <laughs> and my husband said, do whatever you want. So I just decided not to go through it. And I am happy that I did not. I don't feel bad. I, I, I don't regret it at all that having a reconstruction. Uh, so now, um, like what I said, that has been like about 24 years ago. I would like to s tell something about my family, which is very equally important. In my family, uh, there are five of us with breast cancer. My sister has breast cancer and three glands. Uh, and three and three nieces have breast cancer. They did a BRAC uh, test on uh, on my one of my nieces, and it was negative. And I would like to specifically specifically tell you about my niece who is in the Philippines. Okay, uh, this niece of mine is a very intelligent person. She's a nurse. She was licensed here in in uh, United States. Three states. She, she, she was licensed in Arizona, Texas, and Massachusetts. So she was not dumb. So what happened is uh, two years ago, she felt something. She did not tell anybody. She did not tell us. And she just ignored it, you know. So when we finally find, uh, found out that uh, she, she has this, this was like only a few months ago. We really, well, at least, you know, I was really mad. I said, are you stupid? I said, you're a nurse and you did not uh, do, uh, when you found out that you had a lump, you did not uh, do anything. But anyway, two years, for two years, you know, he had that. So finally, my sister, who is now in the Philippines, who also had breast cancer, uh, really insisted that he go to the doctor. Uh, lo and behold, you know, after doing the biopsy, she is already stage three. Okay, what lessons are we going to draw from this? First, it's very important, ladies, women, to have mammogram. I did not have any symptoms. I did not have any lump, okay? And every time I go for a mammogram, you know, I pray and pray, please let negative, negative, negative. 
So if I did not have that mammogram, I would not have found out that I had breast cancer. Okay, so very important, have a yearly mammogram. Yes. yes. And also, I want you to draw a lesson from my niece. My niece, who is very intelligent and a nurse, ignored her symptoms. Two years, she had the lump that she felt. She did not do anything. Now that she went to the doctor, biopsied and everything, she is already three. stage three, oh which means to say, before they, must, they cannot just do a mastectomy, they have to do a chemotherapy first to shrink the lump. So please, ladies, if you feel anything, you know, mammography first every year, do it. And also, uh, if you feel anything, you know, in your breast, do a self-breast examination, you know, when you take a bath, you know, whatever, whatever. Uh, if you feel something, please go to the doctor right away. Do not ignore it. Do not say that, you know, it's nothing, you know, it probably is this and that. It is something. If you feel something, do something. Thank, Thank you. you so much, Tita. That was, it's very important because I am also uh, on a very, it, I was a zero stage and it was from early detection that my uh, breast cancer was found. And you were so right. If we women make it a point that that breast self-examination is done monthly and your mammogram done yearly. Mm -hmm. And if you cannot do this mammogram, ma self-breast examination monthly, I told, remember I told them during our lunch, have your husband <laughs> do Correct. your self-examination yeah, that's, that's, that's every month right after your menstrual cycle. I'm sure, I, as I said, it will not only save your life, but it will save your marriage. Definitely. Right, Tita? Right. <laughs> you agree? So, Tita, tell us your story on uh, your mine breast cancer. Mine is a more traumatic experience. I was very young. My, I'm going to go to tears again. Anyway, oh. my youngest was only 13 years old. I was 41 years old. I don't know. Every time I, I, I talk about my survival, I cry. Because I thought I was going to die. Anyway... One night, I was taking a bath, and uh, I detected a lump. It was a very small lump. Uh, and I said, I didn't have any mammogram because I was still only 40. They do the mammograms usually at 50. Mm -hmm. So anyway, uh, I, I felt something in my right breast. So I told uh, my husband, Nelson, I said, can you feel it for me and see if I'm right? There's something in there. It's the size of a corn, I said, or even smaller than that. And she said, yes, there's something in there. And right away, his, you know, his facial expression changed. It might be cancer, he said. So right away, he booked, uh, he booked uh, one of the surgeons to take a needle biopsy, Dr. Stanley Goldberg. That was 1983. It was in the, about the first week of October. And he said, uh, I, I think you'd li I'd like a needle biopsy on my, on, my ha on my wife. So he did that, and he couldn't get any specimen at all. So the next time he said, we'll do, we'll open her up and get um, a biopsy. So this was sent uh, to the pathologists, and uh, they saw that it was cancer. So, of course, I couldn't sleep. I didn't know what to do. I was young. You know, uh, I didn't expect it then. And so uh, the, the pathologist saw it and uh, he said, it's, it's in the zero states because there were, no other, there were no other lumps in my breast. And I'm really thankful that my husband was there to support me during this time. So after the pathologist declared that it was already positive, that the, on that Friday, that was October 13, that's the Fatima day, uh, October 13, 1983, they did my surgery at Boswell Hospital with Dr. Stanley Goldberg. Um, I stayed there for quite, they gave me blood because I'm, I'm anemic, I have thalassemia. Mm. So they had to give me blood. And of course, there's another scare because that was the time when they had the hepatitis C scare then. But anyway, instead of staying there overnight or two days, I stayed there for more than seven days. Uh, there were complications. Um, I was shivering, 
Uh, so anyway, it was a traumatic experience for me, but I got over it. They got, uh, I think, seven or more than that of my of my lymph nodes, uh, and they were declared uh, negative. Oh, so I was, I was referred to the oncologist, uh, Dr. Barnett. Uh, she's also a Filipina. So she, take, she took care of me. She said, since you're in the zero states, I don't have to do anything. And that was still 1983. So I guess there was no use for tamoxifen or even radiation. Mm -hmm. She said, but we'll be on top of that. We'll have to see you every month and check on that. And after that, three months, from three months to a yearly, yearly to five years, and they, they found that there was no, um, no metastasis in my body. Uh, he was a very good oncologist, and I really thanked her for taking care of me. But my husband was really also very supportive in the way that I had to be, I had to get well, I had to recover and move on because my life, my life was just put on a stop. You know, I was bringing the kids every day to school, and I was going to do that. You know, uh, so uh, we took turns. Uh, and so uh, I went on with my life. I, I, I prayed, I prayed, but I, I still had to overcome, you know, my emotions because uh, I thought I was going to die too. But luckily, and uh, God, you know, God gave me that extension of life, and mm -hmm. I'm very thankful. My brothers came to see me uh, maybe a few years after that because they were all scared too. Uh, a few of my friends from the East East Coast came also. One was a psychiatrist. He thought I was going to be depressed. And there is a very good story that I'd like you to tell. You know, one of my colleagues when I was in the laboratory developed, uh, he, she developed also breast cancer. And just like Amy's uh, niece, she didn't want to have it operated on. I said, go on, please take it, until it became the size of the orange. Her name was Emma. Emma Kitty Kit. So I said, please take care of that. I said, you know, I had to make her aware that if it's too late, she's not, she's not going to be able to recover. Lo and behold, after two years, she died. I had to go there before she died. I said, uh, why weren't you aware of that? I, I, I told you to take care of yourself. So I'd like to just tell our audience that I've, I've, I've let my children be aware of what's happening, if they're positive or what, if they want to take care of their, of their mammograms. They have their mammograms now because I'm also scared that it might also be genetic. Mm -hmm. uh, my mother didn't have it. Uh, my, father, my father did not have cancer. Uh, I think there was one brother that had lymphoma. But I know that I think from my cousins and also from my, uh, from my aunts, I had about three of them in the in my family. So anyway, uh, I think as as women, we should be aware of this. We really should uh, have our mammograms regularly, and possibly maybe like you said, early detection. Even when you're taking a bath, the best way to detect it manually is either your husband does it or not go into the shower with soap. You can easily detect it. That's how I detected it. Uh, yeah, with soap, yes. Um, so um, I'd like you to be aware. We'd, we'd like you to all be healthy. We don't, we don't want you to have this sickness that we had because there are complications. Uh, and we'd like you to go on with your lives if you have had it. Cancer is always a scare. Just like they said, we're fearful of the big CA. Thank you very much. Thank you, Tita. That was a very powerful story. And I hope that our audience will get uh, inspiration to get your mammogram checked. As Women's Month, we celebrate our womanhood. And we need, just like a car, have your bodies checked and mammogram every year. And Early detection is better than a late stage of cancer. And do not ignore your symptoms. Do not ignore your symptoms, as Tita uh, Amy, Amy mentioned. And I know that it is very scary that some women will wait and wait because to even just to think that you may have it is already scary. 
much more when you were diagnosed with it. Uh, but I think God has given us this so then we can bring awareness to more people. Because I think these women here and Bernie, you are all very strong. And I myself, when I had my breast cancer, I actually thought I had been more courageous. I said, I lost my breast, but I found my voice. But you know what? <laughs> when this, the hysterectomy came, I actually lost my voice. It took me three months before I can tell it to the public about this story. That's why uh, I'm glad that I have Bernie, Tita Amy, and Tita Debbie to be with me. This is like uh, my tribe of women. Uh, as women, we really need to really take care of each other. Right, Bernie? Tita Debbie? Right. And, and I would correct. like to yes, add of course. one thing. Yes. So, Tita Amy um, shared that um, she doesn't have reconstruction. Yes. So, which is a good thing. Um, to be honest with you, I have reconstruction. And I can tell you that there's also side effects about it. Yeah, I might be telling myself, oh, I still look like I got my boobie. But um, the, the chest pain and the healing process, it takes a while. And I am no longer the good hiker 20 miles person. Now I just going to hike for five miles and my breathing is not that um, normal because, of course, there's something in your body that compressing your lungs. I think that's the main uh, thing that I observed. So if I could pick to go back on that kind of route, if I'm going to have a flat breast or this cardiation, uh, uh, you know, reconstruction, I think I'll go with uh, no more, no more of um, selling inside. I think for the future, those women who will go to this kind of question, if you are going to have a flat, or reconstruction you have to rethink seek advice and of course check if this is something that is for you i regretted to have a reconstruction for the purpose of um, pulling my energy back so i'm hoping and praying that i'm still in the process of healing i'm still new and i can pass this kind of stage but um, this is something that you have to think about if in case you will the same uh, scenario that I have. Thank you, Bernie. I, that's a very good point that you have mentioned. If I also had reconstruction, and if I will be choosing now to have a reconstruction, maybe I will reconstruct getting my fats from my <laughs> belly and not a silicone. But if you have to get a silicone or a saline um, reconstruction, just get fats from people who are willing to give you yeah. fats or yeah. better not have nothing. <laughs> Tita, yeah. Tita, Amy, you are so You're right, uh, right oh, I didn't have to have no reconstruction. Yeah, I didn't have reconstruction. And then. Bernie, thank you for bringing that out because that's very powerful. Either I would like to look like I have a size D. I'm always flat when I was young. And I was even teasing my friends. I'm going to get a big one that I can just do like this. <laughs> <laughs> but after 100 cc's of um, the, for the reconstruction, I said, no, uh, this is enough for me. But now you're right, Bernie. Um, if we will be asked, should I have a reconstruction or not? No. Better or not. There's plenty of brass that you yeah, make correct. look like yeah, 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 yes, you have yes. prosthesis, yes. <laughs> and prosthesis. So thank you, Bernie, for that um, that you mentioned. Yes. Well, yes. Oh, I didn't have reconstruction. Oh, you did not? No, no. Yeah. I, I thought about it, but Nelson said you don't need any. Wow. Yeah, that is a very important point. You know, you have to consult your, you have your to husband. have a Ask communication your with your husband. Yes. Uh, just briefly, I'm going to tell you, uh, I have a friend, you know, uh, who had uh, her? Who had her um, breast removed? And the husband did not want uh, the breast removed up to the point, up to the time that he, she was going to go to the uh, operating, operating room. Already, you know, the husband really insisted not to have the breast removed, but she did anyway. <laughs> and and you know divorced. what happened? They divorced. They divorced. <laughs> Good for Good her. Good riddance for, for him. Her. Good for riddance. Her. <laughs>
good for her. <laughs> we are we're so lucky. We have very good husband. Very good yes, husband. who very actually innocent. did yes. not. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, the only wish yeah. for our husband, our husband's only wish yeah. is our good I health. Think that was terrible, right? you know, yes. going to the operating room and <laughs> then telling gosh. me, "Leave me one. <laughs> Will you please leave me alone?" <laughs> <laughs> you let me do what I want to do with my body. <laughs> that was really um, yes, 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 I, yes. You know that keeps on I, coming back to me. I, I, I also, yeah, I, I also yeah. uh, remember yeah. That's one. That's so sad, you know. One. Um, That's sad. One friend, her um, breast cancer was an aggressive one. Oh. And I was. I thought that since the husband is the one so involved. I brought her some clothes after her mastectomy, thinking that she had two mastectomy. And I was surprised. It was like, you left one? And in my mind, like, oh, my God. I, I hope she's doing well right yeah. now. But some, some husband could not. Yeah, um, yeah they can We're so lucky it. we have. We are very yes. lucky. Oh, we have a very, husband. Very who, lucky. <laughs> and so thank you, Berlin, as well. <laughs> You're going to be fine. Yes. yes, stage one. My my sister had a stage two, uh, Macbeth. You know, yeah, I think, and she's yes. doing fine. She yes. went through a lot, you know, with chemo and everything. Yes. But uh, wow. that's tough, you know. And I'm I, happy that she survived that yes. and she's doing okay. Yes, and and actually that's why I brought you, Tita Debbie and Tita Amy, because you give us hope. Yeah, and right. as many of you know, Tita Debbie and Tita Amy are. Fashion icon, oh, no, ideal not. parents, no, ideal not. couples here we're in the valley. These not. are this. This is what we should emulate, right, uh, oh. Bernie? Yeah. So uh, exactly. Uh, Honestly, um, we really look up to to you, uh, women who are ahead of us, especially with the uh, history of cancer. For me, when I had cancer, I told, oh, how many more years? Five, ten, right, right, right. and that's it. But hearing from you guys that you are still here and yeah. are full of life, that's yeah. give us a lot of hope and encouragement. Definitely and we still so. Be, um, you know, empower other women and reach out. God is still have a lot of uh, things oh, yes. store for us. And thank you for that. Yes, and yes. that is uh, why I brought this uh, two women of wisdom. Oh, oh thank, thank you. Oh, thank I you. would say. Three women of wisdom, Bernie. Yeah, four yeah. women of wisdom. <laughs> <laughs> All bosom friends. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> We're pink sisters. Yeah. And um, Bernie, I know you are doing so much, not only in your hiking. At this time, what you're, um, you're, you're even in, an entrepreneur in uh, Tennessee. Can you share us about that? To oh, give us more not, hope. Are related to... Okay, so with related to my cancer, I'm still on the transition, you know, healing. And uh, I went to my doctor uh, two weeks ago, and he was not happy that I stopped his medication. But I, for me to heal on my own, I, I moved to a natural way of healing. So basically, I'm doing fasting. Um, I know that if you are, um, if your cancer cell, like estrogen is feeding our cancer cell, if I believe that I starve my cancer cells, they will die naturally. <laughs> so I try to eat healthy as much as possible. In one meal, I complete all the nutrients that I need my body. And of course, after my operations last year i start gaining the excessive weight because i become inactive and now i'm trying to lose all those excess weight but like what you said i'm very active physically and mentally so when i had that operation i went to school <laughs> on my recovery time i studied at home online and then i went to establish another business of ours like Tita Amy, she got they uh, they have rentals, so that's what we are part of. What we're doing, we flip homes, and after flipping homes, we sell it. Oh, I know the market oh, is not wow. so good, but this is my passion. I'm my passion is using my dual being a camp carpenter <laughs> in uh -huh. nature. We want flip homes, yeah. so yeah. that's another adventure making me focus. But honestly, 
the reason why I go to venture is during my healing time, I asked the Lord, Lord, what else I could do? You know, my life is only path of for me, you know, be, building my own career, being a good employee, being a good mother to my one child, a wife to a husband. But what God's plan for me? But I realized I have limited resources. How can I help other people? But God, I believe he gave me a lot of other um, skills. He gave me wisdom to produce. And we are here in America, which is the opportunities available. That's why I jump in to other ways of getting producing income to households and in the future as well, helping others. I shared to Ms. Ria last time the reason I was able to go to school. I came from poor um, provincial uh, kid from big family. But the reason why able to go to engineering school is someone from America became my benefactor, sending um, me my tuition to go to Mapua Institute of Technology. Wow. Can you imagine? I don't even have a fare from my Batangas to Manila just to mm -hmm. go to school. I, my mother cannot even provide. But hey, at that time, I have a hat. I, I was a boyish, so I have a hat and I went to a tomato vendor and I asked him, can you buy my hat so I have a fair? But that's the day where I make a decision that, hey, God has a plan. I'm here. Someone helped me to go to school and I want to repay that goodness. And God gave me the opportunity to be here in America. I'm still alive. And that is the time the way able to uh, rethink of my life when I had a cancer. God, I asked God, what's your plan for me? And hoping that it will happen. <laughs> Wonderful, Bernie. Thank you. You not only inspired us with your great health, but now you are inspiring us to also be financially fit. Yeah. Right, Bernie? Yeah. So that's wonderful. Thank you. Maybe one day you will be the one who will be giving the scholarship. And yes. Buhay Buhay sa America, that is our goal of bringing schol uh, educational scholarship through our uh, we are not a foundation yet, but we have done many projects in our community that had been supporting uh, scholarship foundation, uh, scholarship, educational scholarship. Uh, in fact, the last uh, Take Me to Banawe, these two are mm -hmm. our sponsors, mm -hmm. and we have um, built, uh, we were able to give um, a lot of school supplies in my hometown and um, in Pampanga we have one student that we're sending to school and uh, full four years of high school and uh, in uh, Katanduanes at a test a nursing student oh, so um, yeah so I hope that those of you will be inspired Help us uh, to make Buhay Buhay Sa America, to have more projects to help others. And I hope that this episode inspired you. And we know we have so much more to talk about. But also, Tita, we have so much events in our community. Correct. Yeah. And Bernie, you're missing them. So uh, before we, the, the show ends, I wanted to promote our upcoming events. Javier, help me to share with our audience our upcoming event. I, I, this uh, May, March 18th, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m., there is the Philippine American Chamber of Commerce of Arizona and GovTech Global announcing the visit of the Datamatic and Quality Management Solution, seeking to provide services to skilled nursing facilities and medical offices and even hospitals. These are from Philippines, a uh, company from Philippines that are offering uh, solutions to uh, American companies here. Thank you so much, Javier. Join us. And also the Pilam Leo Scutillon. These beautiful ladies are actually granddaughters of the Ballester and the Billia Moore. How many of them? Uh, uh, I have two and I, I have three. So four, six. 
10, 10 yes. beautiful ladies going oh, to have their cotillion. So, um, Tita Debbie, this will be on March 23rd? Yeah, but she's, she's uh, I think she should talk about it because tita, she was the one who, who really in, initiated Tell us where it. it will be, Tita? Yes. At the Hilton? Uh, at the Hilton, uh, the 16th Street Hel Hilton. Okay, and it's yeah. $70 per person. Right, but and you said you're coming after, so we'll, we'll and have... And dinner will be served, and... They, yes. The support uh, goes to the uh, Philam Lions Club Charity Foundation. All right. So you can talk about yeah. it if you want. Yes. Yeah, I think you said everything okay. already. All right. <laughs> so happy birthday to all this uh, wonderful cotillion uh, celebrant. And the International Women's Celebration is coming up on March 30th, this wow. Saturday, from 6 p.m. to 11 p.m. at Saigon Center. It's located in Chandler, Arizona, and for only $65 per person, there will be a taste of the world. It's a buffet-style food with all this uh, lovely co-chair from all different cultures are bringing the best food of their culture imagine oh. that it's a uh, all of uh, oh, it's uh, a buffet yeah, but that's, and that's we will have season. the women of distinction award night at the time there will be a red carpet photo live performance parade of culture and the keynote speaker will be um Harry Taylor, Harry and Taylor, uh, and also we have our Ms. Dr. Richelle Miller. So if you are interested, I got tickets and go uh, talk to me or contact me for more information for more information and get your ticket today because tickets are limited. Okay. And another event coming up is the Bridge of Peace, a transformative reconciliation from the inside out this is sponsored by the women's federation for world peace on april 7 at 3 p.m at the seventh day adventist church of globe in arizona hope the for those of you who are from globe come and join us it is a free event and uh also the phoenix asian american lions clubs 2024 installation is on april 27 from 4.30 to 11 p.m., there will be a fashion show for a cause at El Gran Palacio in Indian School Road in Phoenix. Contact uh, President Jen Pacto Aquino for details. And ticket is only $50. And another one is Save the Date for Philippine American Nurses Association of Arizona's uh, election of officers and in induction of their officers and members on May 18 at the St. Paul Catholic Church Hall. So save the date and contact uh, President Riche Riza Richella. Another one is the Mr. and Miss Teen Arizona 2024, the Philippine Independence Day celebrates uh, the Mr. and Miss Teen Philippines and they're looking for candidates. And if you are 18 to 19, a Filipino descent, a resident of Arizona, and must have talent, poise, and charming personality. Hope that you can join uh, this event on June. I believe the event is on June 8, and the coronation is on July 27. Thank you so much, Javier. And is that all we have for our upcoming event? Oh, we also have to thank our sponsor of today, um, Women's Federation for World Peace. If you can share the link, WFWP. Oh, this is the Women of Distinction. This is that upcoming March 30th event. Get your ticket. This is just the media press conference and much more if it is the day of the event. And as I said, thanks to the Women's Federation for World Peace, our sponsor of today's show. I am very proud to be a member of the Women's Federation for World Peace. If you can check the link, WFWP, yeah, that's the website, and join us and be a member of the Women's Federation for World Peace. This is uh, an organization that 
is not only serving the women, but will serve the world and really create a world of peace. If all women of the world will come together and support one another, this world will truly be a peaceful one. Don't you think so? Yes, of course. Yes. And yes. of course, there is another one coming up, Cursos de Negocios for all Spanish uh, in the East Valley. This is a, a class in Spanish. So for those of you who are uh, Spanish speaking, who are in the, Sp in the East Valley, especially in Chandler, contact the uh, DAS Foundation. And this is in cooperation with Entre Mujeres Radio. Oh, thank you so much, Javier, for showing us the, we have, uh, the Entre Mujeres Radio just had their International Women's Day at the uh, beautiful, the pink door. Oh, yes. <laughs> and Splendid, it's yeah. uh, owned by Lupe Encinas, right. who is actually a great uh, woman leader. And I just heard that Lupe is running also for the city of Glendale. And as we have many women in power, women now going to be in politics, I wanted to give a huge shout out to my councilwoman, Christine Ellis of Chandler. She is re, uh, running for, uh, for re-election for the council of uh, Chandler. And my sister, Shante Salisbury, one of our co-chair, she's running for state representative. For, if you are in East Valley, Gilbert and Chandler, let's support her and put her in the office. Also, another Filipina is uh, running also. Re, um, she's, um, her, Hernandez is her name, Janine Hernandez. She is running for the uh, peace a justice of the peace yes. here in oh, phoenix okay. she is a, a yes and mm -hmm. she's happy filipina and we really support all our community um politicians especially ryan winkle ang ating mayor of mesa he's running for mayor of mesa he's not a woman but he loves to support women thank you so much so that's all our upcoming events it's a long, um, long, long programs we have in Arizona. Bernie, you must be missing Arizona from all these <laughs> events. Yep, we miss everything about <laughs> Arizona. Actually, our friends. Come visit us. Yes. Yeah. So from our, uh, do you have any other? Regards to Berlin. Uh, to I'd, I'd like I just to uh, note okay. <laughs> that we have a very good a keynote speaker for the cotillion uh -huh. i don't have her name but she is a boxer Ooh. she's a uh, uh what is her name i i just remember the last name it's r-e-i-d oh uh, yeah but he, she's half filipina oh. and she's a relative of the Ebalos in Sambales. Nice. So uh, we're looking forward because she, we're looking forward to meeting her because apparently she's a very good speaker so when you get a chance maybe come just come see yes. her because uh, uh, we we wanted the pilot, but we we couldn't get the armless pilot, yeah. uh, the Filipino one. Oh yes, she she she, had, she was a speaker uh, one time. Yeah, but this one is also different. She's a boxer. Yes, such yeah. great yeah. stories. Uh, th that's why women are so much. Uh, there's so much power mm -hmm. within our femininity, yeah. and that we that's one thing we have to embrace yeah. who we are as women yeah. we're so lucky to be born as a woman even though we don't have the breasts in our inter <laughs> reproductive <laughs> organs we are still women Definitely and because so. we have reproduced already oh thank you bernie uh, bernie has mentioned oh, reg me. regards to berlin yes um one day i was mentioning about women is stands oh. like w how do you do and oh. this is because we as women if we oh. pray to god and ask for god's guidance we become stronger and we become mothers who are grounded with god's uh, wisdom then as we become mothers we become bigger as we have oh. love <laughs> and that is how we can bring the world peaceful world You're so like from women to motherhood to love oh and that is how 
this yeah. world can be healed. And we love you, Bernie. And we love Tita Debbie love and Tita too. Amy. Thank you. And uh, Javier, nice you. thank you for supporting okay. women. And we are uh, really happy that Entre Mujeres Radio has given the voice for all of us women here in Arizona and beyond. And from here, this is Ria Luz of Boy Boys America at Entre Mujeres Radio. I thank God for you. Until we meet again, please come join us next episodes. God bless you. Thank you. This was Boy Boy Sa America. Join us again next time at EntreMujeresRadio.net. Hanggang sa muli, mabuhay!